welcome everybody to today's very special ses session. I actually am pretty sure this is going to be an extraordinary conversation. The last time I talked to our guest, Derek Rydell, um, it was in 2014. And at that time, I thought the conversation was extraordinary. And just based on our a few minutes of connecting just before we started now, I can see that we've had in some ways a parallel journey, bottom line of which is that everything is deepening for everybody. And we're getting down to the core because that's the process that's happening now. So we'll talk about that. Before I officially welcome Derek, um, I'd like to do just a momentary connection. I always like to do this, just close your eyes because it brings us back to here. So just kind of invite your system to be with that word here, where it's here, here, and also now. When is now? So it invites us here and now. In terms of Kabbalah, here and now, it's like the present moment or the connection between two hearts that become aligned beyond words or identity or that moment of transcendence between you and your source, you and God, or you and another person, you and yourself. The transition between night, dawn, day, day, dusk, night. The word is omek, it's a depth. Omek means depth in Hebrew and a connection that's beyond this dimension. Likewise, here and now, both carry that potential. And when we connect with here and now, we're really in the space where change, creation, new, revelation, manifestation, deep knowledge, quantum shifting, so much more can happen. It doesn't happen anywhere else. It happens only here and now. And life tends to keep us, you know, out of here and now circling around it or forgetting about it altogether. So since we have deep um, wisdom and spiritual truth and authentic human potential that is ready to flow into these spaces that we're creating here in this summit and certainly this one that we're creating right now, I should say co-creating. We want to be here and now so that we can receive it and allow it to work in our system and to open what has to be opened, what's destined to be open and what we most deeply desire to be open and to shift out, you know, whatever has been in the way or to transmute it. I'm sure we'll talk about that. So with that, I, I'm very, very excited to welcome Der Derek Rydell. He's the number one best-selling author of Emergence. Seven Steps for Radical Life Change, which, reveres, re, which reveals the revolutionary principle, the law of emergence. This book shows, how, shows people how to tap into the pattern of perfection in any area of their life and create the right conditions for it to unfold. So I like the way that I like so many things about Derek's language, which obviously come from Derek's thinking um, and the, the principles to which he's connected and which he's here to help reveal. And um, the phrase here is to tap into the pattern of perfection, i.e. there is one that already exists, we just need to tap into it, and then create the right conditions for that pattern of perfection to unfold. Also, the Abundance Project, 40 Days to More Wealth, Health, Love, and Happiness, where he lays out a time-tested system for activating the abundance principle, which sets you free from the belief that outer conditions determine your life and shows you how to generate everything you need, no matter what conditions you face. So this is what I call co-creativity. So the first, obviously, principle is to tap into your true pattern, your pattern of perfection. The second is to allow yourself to co-create the abundance that you want in whatever area of life. Derek's diverse background includes training top executives at Fortune 500 companies, including American Express and Walt Disney Company, in empowered leadership and communications, coaching celebrities and media professionals, including Oscar and Emmy winners, creating conscious entertainment as a contributor to top blogs, frequent podcast guest and the host of his own top rated emergence podcast. He shares cutting edge spiritual principles and success strategies to help you achieve the life that you desire. So before I want, I, I'm about I wanna, to, I think I'm going to change the bio. I'm going to edit and just end it with yada, yada, yada. 
Okay, good. So um, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times I don't even read the bios because, you know, we have to have them, but they don't really say who we are, but then that's going to come out in our conversation. But here's something I want to read from, um, from, as I mentioned to you right before we, we went online, um, you are, you've created a very, very, very special offer, which we're not going to talk about um, in any detail right now, but we will toward the end something really not to be missed but i want to read something that something that i've never ever offered like this and am not offering anywhere else and that's legitimate that's not just I believe you. a marketing thing yeah. no i believe you it's i couldn't i kept reading and i'm like what <laughs> what 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 wait i misunderstand anyway that that's for a little bit later but i i read these words there are a lot more words on the page that will that will that's linked down beneath this um this video but don't go there now but do go thereafter. Anyway, I just was so struck by these words that I need to start by reading them. It's mm -hmm. so aligned with everything that I know and everything that I think everyone must know because it's truth, capital T. Mm -hmm. Your life has not been a random series of events without meaning or purpose. These are Derek's words. Every meaning has been by design, but I could be saying these words too, I often do, and you know, pretty similar. Your life has not been a random series of events without meaning or purpose. Every moment has been by design, I'll say divine design. Through all the seeming accidents, losses, and chaos, there's always been a larger order seeking to emerge. The key to reclaiming your life's power isn't in changing the past, but in seeing the patterns clearly for the first time. When you do, you come into alignment with your real reason for being here, and you discover the work your life has been preparing you for all along. And I want to just add from my own perspective, I mean, that's so, <laughs> it's wisdom. It's just with truth wisdom. But, you know, I just want to add from my perspective, which I'm pretty sure you would agree with, that you're helping people, among other things, to bring out their, their mission into the world. Um, but the work that we're here to do, it started the moment you were born. And it's continuing at every moment. And it's not only, likewise, your purpose, your, the work you're here to do is your purpose. It's not only in the things that you will produce out of your light, your desires, your challenges, and your transformation, your growth, but it is everything about your life. Just as Derek's words so incredibly point out, there isn't anything that's happening to any of us, good, bad, ugly, brilliant, anything in between or beyond, that isn't part of this vast emergence that's happening to all of humanity and is each one of us is an, an, in an irreplaceable essential piece of the puzzle just like a jigsaw puzzle you cannot create the picture on the box with if you're missing a single piece in fact it will drive you crazy and we are each a piece in that divine puzzle and that divine puzzle is ready to unfold it's almost ready it's almost done so now it's time for each of us to to dig inside and discover more of those, as Derek puts it, those light patterns, our ideal pattern, the patterns that have been standing in our way, and to know it within the framework of it's all part of the picture. This is all the deep self-development, the deep transformations that the whole world is also kind of being pushed into now. Not kind of, it is being pushed into. But each one of us can act as, um, to use a phrase, a kind of a homeopathic drop. Each one of us in leaning into our own process from this more divine frame, this more accurate frame, is literally impacting the whole. And it isn't going to take very long until it takes off like a domino's falling or like a wildfire in a good way, but we've got to do that. We have to. We're standing between, you know, destruction and rebirth, you know, mag magnificent divine rebirth into a, a completely transformed world. And we need to be the actors and we need to be conscious to do that. Yeah. So anyway, with that, Derek, thank you so much for jumping in and being with me and all of us on the summit. I'm so moved and excited to be able to see where you are now and to, you know, that to to open up those depths of wisdom and whatever comes out through. I also believe that uh, you probably do as well. I don't know. I'm assuming, but that that whatever comes out from within is meant is meant for you know whoever is meant to listen. It's a kind of a co-creation between totally. every person involved, and totally. the, and this conversation. And then you know, 
the creator, the destiny, you know, the, the guiding hand. So it's going to be unique like you're offering, it's gonna be absolutely unique. And everybody here by being here live or by replay is part of that which pulls this out that is coming, emerging into the world. So anyway, that said, I would love you to start by talking about the world, like as you were doing, um, where are we? And what does it mean? Yeah, let's just start with that. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> like, like one of those big maps in the mall, you know, it says you yeah. are here, right? right? Um, okay. It's really important to know where you are if you want to get, if you want to try to get to the Apple store, you got to know where you are in the mall. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of truth about that uh, in terms of our own life. If we want to get where we want to go, we have to know where we are. We definitely have to know where we want to go too. We have to know what target we're aiming at. But it's very difficult to know where you are when most of our mile markers and ways of determining where we are is based on a lot of conditioning and you know peer pressure parental fantasy societal conditions beliefs there's a lot of a lot of conditioning that has gone on ever since we were young and even before that you know the sins of the father are passed on to the to the children kind of thing and so there's a lot of beliefs and perceptions and maps of reality and we have a map of reality that we formulated early on based on our experience and so a lot of times we're trying to determine how to get where we want to go based on this map of reality. And that's okay. And that's valuable. Like initially when you get that map and for a period, for a period, it actually is an accurate map, right? It's like, okay, I'm in a particular environment where it's not okay to ask for what I want or to want too much or to be too much or to not be enough. I have to strive or I have to be quiet or I have to be daddy's little helper, or I yeah. have to take care of my, you know, we just, we develop a map of reality for and safety. an identity for safety and for survival because yep. there's core human needs, a need of meaning, a need of love and connection, a need of security, et cetera. There's a handful of core needs. So we have to figure out how to get those needs met. So we have a map of reality. Okay, this is how I get it, which by the way is what happens and has happened evolutionarily. We've developed the way of seeing, the way of feeling, the way of thinking, the way of perceiving, right. not reality. We do not perceive reality. We perceive reality through the filters we have evolved based on what we believe we needed to survive and perpetuate. And the same thing gets recapitulated as a child. We do it all over again. We, we, we are not experiencing reality. You could say we are in touch with reality and then we're born <laughs> and then we experience all these particular interesting people and things, but then we develop a new set of filters, coping mechanisms, you could call it whatever, based on, and we create this map. Now, again, that's valuable because we have to get, our, get those needs met, get love or we stagnate and die, get food, get safety, security, all those things. Social acceptability, that, social, all, all that Big stuff. Bridge, walking, got, some of the things are useful. Totally, because if you got yeah. kicked out of the tribe evolutionarily, you die. Yeah. You wander along in the desert alone and you get eaten by something or you just die. So we, so that's the first thing to understand. There's a lot of this survival going on. But what happens, especially if, for everybody it happens, but especially probably for those listening, where there's an impulse and a purpose to be evolutionary in your life on some level, to maybe even be revolutionary, to grow, to keep growing, to make a difference, to be a difference, to be a light in the world, a change maker in some way, or even just in your family lineage or in your community. What happens is that impulse, that life force, that divine force, that seed of infinite potential planted in the soil of our soul, it starts to emerge, it starts to blossom but it bumps into our map of reality. And that map of reality is like, now we're trying, we thought we were on our way from LA to New York. Now we're going from LA to Hawaii, but we're still using the same map. Yeah. And the problem is that map doesn't work or better yet, it's a map from the 1800s and those streets don't exist anymore. <laughs> Why is there a big building where I should be able to make a right turn? This doesn't make sense. There's no, what happened to that town? What's going on? We wonder why we're so disoriented because we're trying to use an old map. Now this is happening 
But this happens to every human being and it's happening to us, especially if we have desired to grow and it's happening at an accelerated rate for those of you listening, if somewhere along the line, you've actually staked a claim, you've set an intention, you've prayed a prayer, God, life, love, truth, use me, send me, command these hands, show me the way, I want to make a difference, I want to live my potential. Well, you prayed it, it's too late, you can't put that back in the to that toothpaste back in. But now that fire of truth and that transformational energy is emerging. And, and a lot of your crises and your challenges and your chronic struggles have been the symptoms that you've been trying to survive in a map of reality that is too small or different than who you really are. You've been trying to save your life or save the world when what you really need to do is serve what's emerging, right? Serve what's emerging. The truth that's emerging, you have to live by insight more than eyesight. You have to become okay. Jedi's, right? You got to live by the force rather than by the stuff. Now, here's what's happening on a larger scale, though. Wait, wait, wait! I, don't don't lose your thought. But just to sure. explain just a little a little bit more what you mean by serve by emerging, just in case that's not complete. Yeah. So so we've been conditioned to basically try to save life, save ourselves, save our loved ones, save the world, Fix save things. the tribe. Right. And that's a valuable and necessary element evolutionarily at a certain point or at certain points. The problem is it's in complete um, opposition to life evolving and emerging and growing. Right. And, and why so, is that? Why is that? Well, and, and you could say that the conservative or the right is about saving and holding on to what is and that the liberal or the left is about progress, progress, neither are right. You need a left and a right wing to fly. It's about the understanding of the dance of chaos and order, chaos and order, chaos and order. It's a dance, masculine and feminine. Masculine is order, feminine is chaos. Chaos is pure life force, creativity, always birthing itself. Masculine is the form and the structure that needs to hold it so that that nuclear power can power a city rather than melt the city down. Yes. They, they, they work together. But if you get too far on the side of saving, saving, holding on, protecting, keeping the same, there's stagnation. Stagnation is another word for hell. Where there's stagnation, there is death and decay and, and the, the, the structures and, and systems stop flowing. Yeah. Yeah. But if there's too much Pro, too much life, too much progress, no structure, no, no order, no control, then you have chaos, you have your energy is like, it's like a thousand watts in a hundred watt light bulb. It's sparking. Oh, I use that example all the time, all the right? time. So, so there's a dance here, right? So we have, to, but right now, and especially when there's a chronic sense of challenge in our personal lives, it's usually a sign that we are too committed to holding on to what was, holding on to who we were, holding on to what that relationship is, holding on to what the world is. And, and that now, you know, there's a line from the Gospel of Thomas, which says, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. But if you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. And so we have to be willing to keep bringing forth what's within us, to keep serving what's emerging more right? I mean, there is one very famous rabbi that said, if you try to save your life, you'll lose it. And if you're willing to lose your life, you will find it. So it's the same idea. And so the <laughs> idea, so the <laughs> idea is, what's that? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I just want to say, add one little like perspective to what you're saying, um, you know, in a simple way, if, if you have new light coming in and new potential coming in, the emerging, and you resist it because it, you don't know it, it makes you feel uncomfortable, you have symptoms, whatever, the more you resist it, the more you will have symptoms, whether emotional, circumstantial, or physical. So it, it, what Derek is saying, I, I just want to echo it from another perspective, just to you know cover another kind of brain. It, you need to know that things are changing within you. There's a metamorphosis going on. And if you All don't right. look within and honor it, and you just try to stay the same, you're going to crack. Exactly. And that's something you're we would prefer stagnate, to avoid. You're going to stagnate at first. There's a, there has to be constant circulation. Yes. And wherever there is circulation, there is life. And where you stop letting circulation happen, 
you start to stagnate and that system begins to break down and eventually die. That water, that beautiful stream or pond becomes a swamp. That cardiovascular system becomes yeah. not so good. Whatever the, your financial system, your creative life, your love life, it will stagnate if it doesn't keep circulating and growing and evolving because life is infinite. And because life is infinite, it can never be stopped. You can't say, okay, let's just put a pin in it. I'm good. This is where I'm going to stay. You know, foxes have nests, have holes, birds have nests, but there is no place for a man to rest his head. We are an ever evolving individualized expression of life. Now, but that doesn't mean just woohoo, we just throw, there's no structure. There has right. to still be structure, but we live in a world where we have overcompensated and overemphasized the masculine, the, you could call it the patriarchy, whatever you want to call it. We've overemphasized safety, security, structure, form, et cetera. And, and as a result of that, we've built a lot of unsustainable systems and institutions, and we've learned to do the same way. Now that's happened now, but on, on the most basic level, in terms of you said, what's going on in the world and what's, what's happening, that's yeah. always happening for individuals. And the individuals that have made the biggest difference in the world in any area, religiously, spiritually, creatively, scientifically, whatever, from Einstein to Oprah, to Walt Disney, to Buddha, to whoever you wanna pick, you know, Jesus, Moses, whatever, Gandhi, Dr. King, they've all bumped into a situation where it's like old map, something new is emerging, and they had the courage to listen, the courage to do the work, to be able to see clearly what is that new map emerging, what is that new idea, and, and what is their unique part in it, the unique branch of the tree of life they're meant to allow to grow. They had the courage to get the clarity, to know themselves, to be true to themselves, and ultimately in the face of the lack of evidence and sometimes in the face of great opposition to that emerging truth. And, and those are all inflection points in history where some dimension of life, creatively, media, technology, religious, spiritual, civil rights, whatever, took a leap forward permanently. Now we still see in the world, some people trying to roll some of those leaps back, but it ain't gonna happen. It's, it can't evolutionarily. It doesn't mean there's not up and down with the curves of things, but these individuals were the, the lightning rods, the end of the places through which an idea was that was a part of a greater divine pattern of freedom, of wholeness, of harmony, of oneness, of infinite good was able to break through. And you could say on the great tree of life, they were one of the branches and it was able to start flowering, to start fruiting. And, 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 and but, but then other individuals had to come together with them and as part of those big ideas and allow this and support that. And so they too had to have great courage to be and find their place on that branch, like another little twig or whatever that comes off of that branch. Right. Yes. And, and so, so we all have a part, not all of us are going to be Gandhi or King or Mandela or Oprah or Elon or whoever you like or whatever, but, we all have a place in that emergence of that tree of life, of the blossoming and the flowering of the divine. Yes. Now, but again, the challenge is we have these maps of reality and we have these identities that served us in a moment or for a season. And then as life evolved and more of our life was calling to us, we let the call go to voicemail <laughs> and we instead tried to keep this life together and that's causing chronic challenges or stagnation problems in relationships or whatever but it's also happening in the world so to get to the world finally there's a map of reality that we also hold as a species or in countries and and that map also tries to be held on to in a country or in the world and, corporations and, and institutions corporate, absolutely so it starts systems, yeah, it starts with the individual and then it leads to a family that can lead to an organization that can lead to a community to a culture, it can lead it can be a whole tribe like a gen like gender or a race. There's 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 
there's these maps and patterns of races, of genders, of tribes, of cultures, of organizations, of countries, and ultimately of the world. But it's all nested within. It's really all one larger map, one larger idea that's trying to unfold, and then like Russian nesting dolls or fractals, however we want to look at it. It's all yeah. nested. And so, and, and we keep thinking it's a bunch of separate things, but it's really not. As I said, you can't fly without a left and a right wing. And you can't live with just a heart and no lungs or just lungs and no heart. You need all of the parts and pieces working as one. And every country, every culture, every gender, every race is an organ and a function and a system within the larger body of humanity. Yes. Right? And so, but each one of them has its own map, its own pattern of perfection. And we do not ascertain the pattern of perfection. We see it through a glass darkly. We see it through filters, beliefs, perceptions, based on our unique journeys. And, the, and as a world right now, whenever we get to these great thresholds in our, in our world, we bump, we have the same issue that happens as the individuals. And I called it earlier on the line with you, it's an apocalypse and it's an Armageddon. And ap an apocalypse and Armageddon, as I've discerned it through revelation, insight, study, et cetera, it doesn't mean literally the end of the world, like, like a bomb's gonna go off and just destroy the whole planet. Right. Not that that couldn't happen. It just, it means the end of the map of the world. It means Can the you explain end. the words again, like you started to do with me and then I decided we should do it live? Yeah. If yeah. Yeah. So Armageddon doesn't mean the end of the actual world. The great book of Revelations isn't saying, isn't talking about the end of the world, literally. It's talking, it's also not talking about a point in time where it all ends, just as Genesis wasn't talking about one point on this date, January 1st, you know, whatever, whatever. It's talking about a process in consciousness that is always happening. There's always a new genesis. And in the larger world, we hit those moments where there's an Armageddon, where there's a breakdown of the old map and model of the world. It's not sustainable anymore. There's so much life that's gathered that's trying to break through. And it can show up as a great world war. It can show up through the pandemic. It can show up in a variety of ways, but it creates a gap where the old map doesn't work anymore. And, there's a, and in that gap, certain individuals or groups of individuals become available to the world that's trying to emerge. Beautiful. And as a result of that, the new iteration, the new map begins to reveal itself. And, and the new ideas are able to pierce that very calcified structure of the collective ego, the collective map, and finally break through, like, like seeds breaking through the concrete we put on top of them, and a little green shoot here and a little green shoot there. Before you know it's a tree, and then the whole sidewalk is taken out, right? Yeah. And so that's what's happening right now. That's the Armageddon. But it's also an apocalypse. And an apocalypse, this is the part that I was telling you about, the actual root meaning of apocalypse Again, doesn't mean the destruction of the world. It means what was hidden is now revealed. It's called the uncovering. And so an apocalypse is when what we did not see, we see. And that's, that's both good and bad news. It's all yeah. good news, but yeah. it's like all the dark, all the fear, all the shadow, all the pain we've been repressing and controlling with distractions and media and everything was great and we had everything and ah you know party on and then all of a sudden it's all taken away yeah and we and it's hard suddenly all that pain all that fear all that whatever that gets revealed as well as the, we see the underbelly in the system begin yes. to reveal itself right so that's that, yeah. one part of the apocalypse the other part is the deeper wisdom the deeper love the deeper compassion. I didn't realize my capacity to love and forgive until I lost my son. In that Armageddon and that apocalypse, I was able to see a deeper reality of love and compassion and oneness and, and, and a value hierarchy 
that was a big reordering of my values. What really matters? What's really important? That's happening on the planet en masse. And a lot of people don't know it's happening because it feels like anxiety. It feels like just more fear. It feels like increased rates of drug addiction and alcoholism and divorce and suicide and all these crazy things going on. But for you listening, <laughs> you're like, oh my God, I thought I just came here to figure out how to pay my rent. No, <laughs> you came here to, to, to realize you're part of a bigger movement that, that the work you're doing really matters. That as you have the courage to really look within and to really discover who am I really meant to be? What am I really made of and made for? And then have the courage to honor that and, and really understand that and begin to organize your life around these deeper values Shifra is teaching and this community is bringing forth. Really organize your life around it. Not just conceptually, theoretically, or on Sundays or Fridays, but actually really recognize there is a larger or purer or truer order that is emerging out of the chaos. And by the way, the order emerging from chaos, there's a word for that. You know, it's chaos theory, but it's also chaotic. 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 Yeah, it's literally the understanding. But it won't just happen. Like evolution has taken us as far as it's going to take us at you know, in terms of um, passively, right? We have to now consciously, as you like to say, co-create, co-evolve with this evolutionary impulse because our, our journey is to become conscious expressions of life, not yes, just yes. automatons, not just a tree, as beautiful as a tree is. And maybe the tree is more conscious, I don't know. But, but we are meant to become conscious. So we have to co-labor with, collaborate with, that evolutionary impulse within our heart. And that means one of my prayers is more than I wanna fix, change, control, manipulate, or heal anybody or anything, including myself. I want to know the truth. I wanna know the truth that makes me free. I wanna be, I wanna see with the eyes of God or see ultimate reality. I want to be a transparency of love and life and truth more than I want to merely create more comfort or convenience or control. Now that's a tough one, but that's, that puts you into alignment with the way life is, right? Not so much the way ego or humanity is, yeah. but the way life is. And it makes you- The way life more, is emerging to be, yeah. The life is emerging to be. And then I'll say one, final piece and turn it back to you about how this all ultimately comes down to you living your purpose or your mission or your greater gifts in the world. And then, you know, we can unpack all this however you want is, you know, you created a map of reality as a young being, probably by the age of between three and seven, it was complete. And, and then you went on living that map and there was a core wound, meaning something you knew to be true about you or about life you had to deny or repress yep. and believe fatal flaw. Yeah. fatal flaw. You had to yep. believe something about you or life that wasn't true in order to survive. Like I'm not enough, therefore, and I'm not going to get the love unless I become more. So I'm going to now strive to become more. Or right? so I'm not enough. Point. And therefore I'm going to stay out of situations that call upon me to do more that's than I, know I can do. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It can go one of two ways. You can either back up and go, I'm gonna cons make a very small life so I don't have to be tested to be more, or I'm gonna really be striving to be more. But on both cases, it's me trying to either get love or not lose love or feel worthy or not feel unworthy. And the lie was that you're not enough or that you're too much or that there isn't enough in the world. There's, there's, there's two basic things. There's the lie about you and the lie about the world. And the core lies about you is I'm not enough or I'm too much. And the core lie about the world is it's too much or there's not enough. Those are the core lies. And, they, and they're broken down into a lot of different interesting creative ways. But we have to believe that on one level <clears throat> because it's what allows us to survive in this dimension, in that moment, and for a period. 
the problem is, as I've already stated, that map won't from 1800 won't get you to New York today. Yeah. And, and so to where you're really trying to go. But if you learn how to read the story of your life and understand that core wound was really a core initiation, that as a result of you rejecting a part of you or believing something that wasn't true, you also developed a whole survival kit. You developed qualities and aspects of yourself that are beautiful and that are valuable, that are useful. If you believe life was out of control, you might have learned to become very much in control. If you learned that you believed you weren't enough, you might have developed your mind and your being so much to become more. All of that's good. Where it's coming from is still the wound. But the development of who you are and the wisdom and the knowledge you've gained on your journey is valuable. And so when you understand how to uncover and excavate that life story, you begin to see that encoded in it is a particular path of transformation. As I like to say, the workshop you've been living is the workshop you're meant to be giving, right? And, so, and we'll talk more about that at the end. But when you understand that, then you're able to see that all these things have not been against you. They've been conspiring to activate parts of you, awaken wisdom in you, put you on a particular path, and allow you to develop a certain knowledge and perception and an ability, ultimately, especially those of you listening now, to reclaim that fragment and of the soul and become a light in a particular way in the world. And when you understand that, it's like a little blossom shows up on that branch that you're supposed to be part of. And then you're able to model for others, either literally or just implicitly, with the path back home again or the path to greater wholeness again. And, and the very greatest leaders, teachers, artists in, in history, and I've studied them, that have made the biggest impact or difference, when you understand their life story and their life journey, you see that they are literally just giving of the fruits of the tree of their life. Unbelievable. Right? And so that's, and, and one other thing about that, which we may or may not get to today, the problem is before, until we know that, instead of giving of the fruits, we're often giving of the roots. We're giving ourselves away. And, and we never really get rooted and we never really get planted and we never thrive and flourish. But wait, so why, why is that? Wait, wait, wait. I need to understand that more. That's a new thought. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain? In yeah, because we're coming from the first model of reality is we're coming from a deficit, right? I wasn't enough or I was too much. There right. isn't enough. Right. Life is too much. Life is dangerous and scary or I'm not good enough, whatever. So we're coming from this core wound model. As a result, we develop um, a map of reality and an identity and a survival kit we believe is what's going to allow us to survive in this right. map of reality. Persona, our persona, right. Right. Yeah. It's all coming from a deficit or a lack or a separation or something like that, or at least yeah. a great degree. As a result of that, instead of being able to nurture from a place of wholeness and rightness and alignment and everything's working, for example, let's say I believe I'm not enough and I, and I discover that the way to be enough or to be loved is to take care of you, to take care of mom oh, and dad. Oh, you're getting people, more. Right? Yes. And so as a result of- trying you, harder. Yes, right? so I know of, that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You relate. So instead of me nurturing and fulfilling the core job I've been given, which is to be the guardian and the gardener of this seed of the divine planted in the soil of my soul, I'm busy watering everybody else's seeds and feeding everybody else's trees and, and, and basically giving away of the soil and the root and the raw material that I need. And then there's not enough. And my tree or my seed is on barren soil and I never get rooted, I never get anchored and I never quite catch up and I never quite have enough. And then I'm resentful or I'm anxious or I'm depressed or I'm angry. And then I blame others. Why are you taking from me? Never giving, whatever the case is. So, so that's just one version. Versus as I re-examine and understand that my primary role is 
to know myself and to thine own self be true, to nurture, to understand the seed of the divine in me and to understand its true needs and to feed it and to nourish it so that it grows strong in me, so that I have a deep inner anchor and integration now. And I know who I really am, not based on the old map. I know who I really am, not what the world has made of me, but what God has made of me, what life has made of me. I know who I really am. And I know that the world didn't give that to me. And so the world can't take it away. Now I'm anchored in something. I'm on solid ground. Now, as that tree begins to grow, I can give of some leaves. I can give of some flowers. I can give of the fruit. And it takes nothing from me. Not only that, when the tree gives of the leaves it's meant to give and the fruits it's meant to give, it actually causes more fruit to start getting generated within it. Now you have circulation. Now you have abundance. Now you have the secret to abundance. The tree doesn't need, the apple tree doesn't have any need of apples. Those are for the community. Right. You don't have any need of your gifts. Those gifts are for the world. But if you're too busy giving away the, the roots and the little baby shoots and you never have a chance to understand yourself, to love and value and fill yourself up, and then to give away of the overflow of the fruits, of the wisdom, of the gifts, then you will always be catching up. You will always be in deficit. You will always be projecting that onto the world and feeling like a victim, or you'll just back withdraw. So now that's a lot I just laid on all you folks. So, but that if you, if you slow this down and listen again, you'll see this, I'm showing you the macro and then I'm bringing it down to the micro or to the personal. Yeah. And as you take charge of the personal, your story and the gifts and the wisdom and the life's work encoded in your life story and you embody that and you organize your life to serve the divine in you to serve the full flowering of the divine in you as your first job then as a result of that you will have so much more to give to your children to your partners to the world and you will flower and you will flourish instead of remaining a seed and in many cases thinking you're an apple tree when you're really an oak tree and or you know and and you wonder why your apples are really bad <laughs> wow yeah there is a lot here and i have a few questions immediately so um i'm I, i'm thinking you know when i would talk to people when i work with groups or present to groups or whatever um you know it's really clear this tribe they keep referring to this group of people tend to be very spiritually talented, spiritually ambitious, like thinking about purpose, thinking about deeper things, very sensitive, both sensitive to others and sensitive to, you know, slights, insults, our own failures, our own insecurities. So a lot of people are stuck in the starting gate for most of their lives because it's too, it's too, it's too impact. It's too scary. It's too impactful. What if I'm not, you know, and I think I, I have, I have read that, and it makes so much sense that when people grow up in a in a home that doesn't really see them, that doesn't nurture this this kind of a soul, mm -hmm. and most of our homes have not. They didn't know uh, how. Yeah. They didn't know how, right? And not right. Even really loving parents don't. If you you need someone to see you, and if they're not exactly like you, they won't see you. And then you know, so or, or even in, when it's worse, when you know people have been criticized. Most of us have. Most everybody has. At a young or it's age. a very chaotic home with you know a lot yeah. of fighting and conflict and yeah any of it you know, yeah or fear or exactly. even or even for some of the younger generation now that might have been raised by parents that were you know kind of children of the new age movement and then they just overcompensated and the kids are like oi you know so leave true. me alone with that nonsense. my kids don't want to hear about spirituality they're so yeah. tired of it yeah it's yeah. so true so anyway it seems like what happens with at least maybe not that last group but our, this, the group that we're speaking, you know, mostly to at this point, we develop a high degree of emotional intelligence because we, we have to figure out a world that doesn't make that much sense to us. Yeah. And so, you know, that, that makes us empathic and sensitive. Yeah. And so to me, and that, and, and that compensation for the feeling of not being enough or not being good enough, you know, whatever, however it occurs for people, it, it causes 
this desire to constantly placate or, you know, from a, from a negative unconscious place, you know, to, to, to make yourself safe, like you talked about in the beginning, or yeah. to give too much because you're so sensitive to the fact that people are suffering and hurting. And how could you say no? How could someone reach out to you? And then you don't even listen and you don't even help. Yeah. And it does. So I want to know, one of the things I want to know from you is, I'm sure I'm not the only one, is how do you transition when you talk about every word that you're saying is so resonating so deeply, but how does, how, how did you, and did this have to do with your son? What happened with your son? That was the other question that I wanted to ask you for a while. How did that, what did that actually do? What are, were the changes? What was, and how did you walk that path? But specifically, yeah. how does a person who is in this yeah, state of I, sensitivity and also, you know, people have responsibilities or people are, yeah. have to go to work or they're running a business or trying to build or they have families, whatever. Yeah. How, 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 I talked yesterday, I'll end with this and turn it over to you. But I, yesterday I happened to talk to somebody that I know who had done about two years ago, this very big event in, um, within the Jewish community globally and, and, and impacted tens of thousands of people. And then, um, you know, got some whatever blowback and wh whatever the case may be and went into a, a, a kind of quiet place. Like she said to me, a personal quarantine for, for a couple of years mm -hmm. and her whole energy had changed. And I saw the benefits and I felt energetically and spiritually, I felt yeah. the benefit, like the grounding, the roots. That's exactly what you said, deep roots. But yeah. I don't know how deep she did roots, that. Rich fruits. <laughs> how did you withdraw for two years? How would you, what did, did you withdraw for, you know, so speak I to have, me. I have quite a lot and, and that's not practical for everybody. Right. You know, in the beginning of my, my journey in my twenties, when I had the first awakening, I pulled out of society and I, for a couple of years and tried to become a monk and all that. And, and that was a necessary period for integration, just like Saul on the road to Damascus, having a blinding experience and going into a cave for the next nine years to figure out what the heck just happened and try to integrate that. Um, we, all, we all need moments and periods of that. Um, it's not practical for everybody to literally pull out completely. You got your kids, you're, where's mommy? You know, it's like you have, you have- I'm in you a know, cave. Client, you I'm gotta pay your mortgage, right, you gotta pay your mortgage bill. You know, you, you, your boss is like, you're doing what? <laughs> you know, um, so it's understandable. But so let's talk about it more in principle first. Okay. The, the first thing to understand is, and I hear this all the time, you know, I've worked with hundreds of thousands of people around the world and many close people, thousands of people one on one to, in the comment about, you know, feeling so sensitive and, you know, e you know, and it's, and it's, it's true. You could grew up in those environments. Our, our nervous system is literally more sensitized. And our emotional body might be way more activated. And in many cases, a lot of things were activated too early from the pure natural evolutionary standpoint. But it also opened us up to intuition, to creativity, right. to all kinds of things. Right. The important thing to remember is that we want to stop telling that story, first of all. We want to stop telling the story of how sensitive we are and how much the world's energies are affecting us mm -hmm. and remember who we really are. And who we really are is the divine. Is, is the light, is the life, is God, is consciousness. And consciousness, you don't really live in the world. The, the whole world is in your consciousness. You're not really moving around through material stuff. You're actually a state of awareness moving around through your consciousness. And as you focus in different dimensions of your consciousness, it becomes manifest. The, the mind that you are focused on becomes matter. Mind and matter, same thing. Mind is just matter in liquid state. Matter is mind in solid state, but it's all a dimension of consciousness. And so you are the one, as we know, ultimately, and this is not a blame the victim, it's just an understanding of the truth that we first and foremost have been given complete dominion over creation. We have the power. The power is in us. There's no power over us except the power within us. And we have to work, especially when we are telling a story that someone or something outside has control or power or agency over us. We have, it's hard, don't get me wrong, but we have to remember and we have to be committed to remembering that the, the source of everything is within us. 
not within our physical body, but within our consciousness. And we have, that's why that prayer I said earlier, more than I want to fix, change, control, manipulate anybody or anything, including me, I want to know the truth that makes me free. I want to awaken. I want to be anchored in a reality that is not coming from the world of changes. I want to be anchored in a reality that is changeless. Yes. The quality of love, the quality of peace, the quality of abundance, the quality of life that is infinite, inexhaustible, indestructible, and uncorruptible. So that's step one, is that practice and that commitment to be anchored in the inner kingdom, in the inner reality, in the inner nirvana, whatever your religious persuasions. I know a lot of people are probably, you know, Jewish, or maybe there's a mixture of a lot of people, a mixture, but, but yeah. But um, it doesn't matter, in my opinion. It's all trying to teach the same basic thing, just different branches of the tree. Right. But so we have to get more and more anchored, as you read the Abundance Project quote in there, so that we understand, no matter what the conditions of the world are, that we're not taking our cue from that, that we're not supplied from the world, we're not supported from the world. There is no safety or security in the world. No person, place, or thing has anything to offer you except reflection, a mirror, an opportunity to strengthen your ability to love and be of service. And, it, and all the love that may come at you is coming from your soul, from your yes. consciousness. And likewise, all the seeming negativity is a reflection of what's going on in you. And, and, the, and so when you get triggered by somebody, when you really understand that, first of all, as the model of reality, then, you know, even Shakespeare said, you know, all of drama was about holding up a mirror so we could see ourselves. And so we have to take on as we're triggered by people or we feel triggered like that person is hurting and I feel like I need to give them more time, even though I really need time for myself. If you just scratch the surface of that and look a little deeper, we will see that we're not really doing it for that person. We're doing it because just below the surface, it's really uncomfortable to not do that. It makes us feel bad about ourselves. Yeah. It makes us feel like we're unspiritual or we feel guilt, we feel shame, we feel or, pain. Or they'll, or they'll be upset with us and think badly well, about And us. even then, even then, if we scratch the surface- And then we'll have surface, to feel badly about ourselves, yeah, 100%. And then we'll feel more badly about 100%. ourselves. Yeah, and so no we emotions have to, will come from it within. It's all from within. We're literally yeah. running the whole thing from within. And that you have to slow it down though. And you have to, again, be devoted to a contemplative way of life to some extent. Again, you don't have to drop out and join a monastery. Spend, if you don't have any practice, spend five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. Get to know what's really going on in you. Get to know when you have a triggering event, don't, you know, you have it, have whatever it is, forgive yourself sit down and actually get to know what's underneath that most obvious line of complaint. You'll notice underneath it is a fear, a need, a desire. Underneath it, there's a story. If I don't do this, then they'll do that, then I'll get this. And if you track it, it always comes down to two things, a feeling we don't want to feel or a feeling we do want to feel. That's it. That's a description of all seven plus billion human beings. We're all going after one of two things. Avoid a painful feeling, feel a good or better feeling. And, and the great, great good news is that that is 100% in our control. Doesn't mean it's always easy, but we can do that. And, and when we realize that what we're really going after when we try to please or appease or control or cajole somebody is avoiding a bad feeling or feeling a good feeling, which means to say, I, I wanna know the truth about me that I'm worthy or valuable or that life is safe and I'm supported and all is Even well, yeah. right? And I don't wanna believe anymore that I'm bad and I'm not enough and life is dangerous and I'm gonna lose everything. Yeah. So we're being, which is a lie, but we're being asked to be with ourselves long enough to begin to tap into that truth, begin to feel the truth of it. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. There's electricity everywhere. It was here during the time of Buddha. It didn't do Buddha any good. 
if somebody had to tap into it, build the structure to access and harness it, and then there were computers and planes and all these things. Well, the love you want to feel, the joy you want to feel, the peace you want to feel, the power you want to feel, the wisdom, everything, it's right here. And, but we, as I said in the very beginning, we have to have the courage to be more interested in what's going on in here and, and breaking it down until we have that aware, actual awareness. Oh, I'm telling the story that's making me feel this or that. I can just tell a new story or I can even let go of all of my stories, all of my opinions and say, God, life, you tell me what's true. You tell me who I really am. Not God out there, but the God of your own being. I don't know what I'm seeing. I don't know what's really happening. Open my eyes, remove the scales from my eyes. Again, more than I wanna fix change control, I wanna know the truth. That person seems like they're being a jerk. I'm afraid they're gonna judge me or attack me or ruin me or leave me or whatever. I'm not seeing clearly, God. I know that because this, that's not the, the world you created. And the only world that is real is the world of the divine creation. Everything else is a perception that has become a dream. And so I'm not going to fight the world of appearances anymore. I'm not going to try to make Uncle Joe like me or Sue or Betty or Bob. I'm going to like myself. I'm going to love myself. And then as I'm able, I'm going to then extend that love and forgiveness to Bob and Joe and Susie and everybody. And then I'm going to say, God, you show me. Life, you show me. True self, show me who I really am, what I'm really made of what I'm really made for. As we do that as a daily practice, and sometimes you gotta stop 20 times a day, right? As a, just for like a minute, just 30 seconds, just noticing, I'm getting all afraid, I'm about to send that email or make that call or do this thing that doesn't feel good, but I'm afraid. Let me just take a minute and just breathe and just get back to myself again and hold myself and meet those parts with love and understanding and try to understand what's the real need here. And again, the real need is always to be able to be with a, a painful feeling without being afraid of it and to be able to tap back in to those good feelings of love and peace and joy. And as you do that, that is the condition. You're no longer a house divided fighting within yourself and then projecting that fight on the world and thinking the fight is out there. The war is within us. You start to end the war. You're not a house divided. That house has greater structural integrity now. And now life can actually move through you more because it's not, it's trying to move through you, but it's like, yeah, like ping pong. It's going ding, 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 all over, you know, inside your, your body or your being, but now you are a clearer channel for what you're really made of and what life really is to emerge through you. And also and the so new era that is coming in. It, it, ha, it can only be come part of us. that new era. You'll, yeah. you'll actually catch that wave because it's, it's coming in and it's trying to use you as part of the unfoldment of the next iteration in your family, in your marriage, in your business, in the world. And as you get clearer of who you are and you stop fighting, fearing, fleeing the world, trying to manipulate people, places, and things, and instead just get better at knowing yourself, at loving yourself, at listening to yourself, at holding the parts of you that are painful instead of trying to stuff them away or change them. Those are little parts from your previous experience that never got held never got heard, never got understood, and their need never got met. And as you do that, you're creating a fertile condition, fertile soil for that seed of the divine to start to break through and blossom, right? And then you notice when Joe criticizes you or Sue tells you you're being selfish, you like kind of look sideways at them and you're like, I'm so sorry that you're experiencing that. Is there something I can do for you? Like you don't take it personally. 
You don't, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Well, you, you know, you're not like all over the place. Right. Or you notice they're not around anymore because you're not a polarity, a match. And people are showing up that are supporting you more and loving you more and there for you more. And, um, or you're just not bothered by it as much anymore. You're less in the world of right. that. And, and I would add, if there is something that you didn't see about yourself because you, know, you weren't able to look, then in that clear exactly. space, you're able to see it. And, yeah. Exactly. If you've embraced those shadows and those parts of you, so you're not projecting them. And then Sue says, you're being so selfish. You said you would do this. You're like, you know what? You're right. I did say that. <laughs> I did say that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah. so sorry. Let's go do yeah. that. That's yes. exactly right. Whereas if Bob, Bob says, you're so selfish because you're not dropping everything and doing what I want. You know, I'm being exaggerating. You're like, that's interesting, Bob. Yeah, I'm being selfish. I'm taking care of myself and honoring myself. You should try it sometime, Bob. <laughs> uh, exa but exactly right. You're not defending or protecting or projecting. So you're just able to be present for the truth. And sometimes the truth is Bob is projecting on you and it's not yours to solve. And sometimes the truth is you're not honoring your word or you are being asked to stretch and be a bigger giver or be more generous or be of more service. But in many cases, in a lot of people's cases, probably yours, Shifra, if you are so used to being the one that gives, the big stretch is saying no and saying more yes to yourself. Yeah, probably oh, the bigger stretch now, although I don't think it always was. I think, okay. you know, for me, a lot of the, I had a stage where there were a lot of blind spots. I didn't see yeah. what I was doing, especially with my kids. Yeah. And that was, that was quite, um, you know, or places where I would get shut down. That was, that was quite the, you know, totally. repetitive lesson, but yeah. Yeah. Totally. I mean, we're always growing. I'm, I keep getting this vision. It's not the first time I've had it, but throughout this conversation, I see like, I'm kind of getting a visual of like molecules or like sparkly stars that are, you know, let's say the multidimensional cosmos and, and when the more we are free of all of these triggers, the more we have those roots, the more we're, we understand that, you know, like when Moses in the Bible asked God, what should I, who should I say sent me, you know, to Pharaoh, I, it's Ekia, Asher Ekia, I am becoming that which I'm becoming. It's a continuous emergence. That's the nature yes. of the universe. So then we're in flow with everything that's flowing through us, for, up, you know, around us, with us, as us. Exactly. And instead of blockages to the flow, it's really all about flow and, and, and blocks, blockages, turning those blockages right. to more flow. And those blockages so, are our personal sense of self, a personal sense of reality, a belief that there is the belief in two powers, the belief that there's good power, bad power, you know, that no, there is no, if that means there's God in something else, then God is right. not God. God right. is just a God. No, just then, right. Right. And so, and that's all just a misunderstanding or misapprehension of certain allegories like the Garden of Eden allegory or, or just misperceptions because you experience, we don't understand that the polarities, you know, selfish and selfless is not good and bad. Yeah. It's a polarity that's necessary. Is it good to breathe out and bad to breathe in? No. <laughs> if you have a battery and you try to plug it in just using the positive charge, is it going to work? No. You need the positive and negative. You need chaos and order. If good and mean. evil. <laughs> good and evil or good and bad or this and that is just a polarity when it's connected it's the void and it's the positive and it creates circulation and it creates the manifestation and chaos and order together becomes a blooming lotus flower and we we are meant to you know we we are not as humans supposed to judge and that's why the whole that allegory is saying you shouldn't have eaten of that. You shouldn't have taken on the role of judging. It's not your job as a human ego. There's one judge and that is life. And it's already said it's good and very good. Now just be an instrument of it. And our, right now we're on a journey of integrating these seeming polarities, forgiving and embracing and embodying so that we are no longer in a fight with the creative process. We're not like, oh my God, that's bad. Oh my God, that's good. We're just a large enough space to hold the whole dance. And right. then life, and I, go ahead. No, which is not to say, and I'm sure you're not saying, 
that there is no such thing as doing good or doing bad. It's bad to take a knife well, and stab. I would say I wouldn't say there's such a thing as doing good or bad. I would say there's such a thing as being in alignment and something right that is yes. constructive or destructive. Right. That's and right. In terms of what's trying to grow, it's like if this right. seed needs sunlight to grow, and I put it in the shade, you could say that's bad. Yeah. Or if I if if I um, wire my electric electricity in my house, and I don't understand the principle of electroconductivity, and Oops. I miswire it, then my house will burn down, or I won't have any electricity. Those are bad things. But I'm not going to say, God, why have you forsaken me? God didn't, or devil, why are you doing this to me? God and the devil had nothing to do with it. I didn't understand electroconductivity and I miswired things, right? If I we go into water, life. right? If I don't know, if I don't know aerodynamics and I build a plane and then that plane crashes or never gets off the ground, it's not because I'm a good person or a bad person. It's because I didn't understand and come into integrity with the principle. And so there are no rights, there are no good and bad, there are principles or patterns. And then are you creating the congruent condition or the integral condition for that principle to work? Or are you out of integrity with it? Another term is sin. Sin is an archery term. That means you're missing the target. Hate, yep. Right? And so, so it's not that you're bad because you missed the target. It's like you missed the target yeah. make a different aim, aim yeah. better, right? So that's, that's what I mean by that. Now, there's certain obvious things. It's like, you know, um, you know, like the Ten Commandments kind of thing. But, uh, and, you know, the Ten Commandments were just the beginning of, of, of a very, 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 um, what's the word? Like, like training wheels level of, okay, we got to have some order. <laughs> we got to organize, we have, some, we have to have some organizing principles because these slaves had just been set free and they were like children and they didn't like have sex with your wives. Well, the world you know. was barbaric at the time. This the was world the was barbaric. The beginning exactly. of an order. Exactly. So, so that's the beginning, but the evolved level is, it's about eventually just being in tune and in touch. Being in with, tune. That's how you see eye to eye with God. Exactly as you said, ultimately. Exactly. Yeah, it's phenomenal really phenomenal. And sometimes I think about it in terms of moving from judgment, which was necessary at a, a certain time in a, a primitive stage of, you know, of, of development, which we've really been into until not too long, into not too long ago. But exactly. Judgment, you, can't you, don't force, you can't force yourself to another level. You do have to honor yeah. where you're at. You know, right. you still have to honor like, you know, if you can't walk on water, don't try. You're going to drown or sink, yeah. right? Right. It's like, or walk through you know, walls. Oops. <laughs> or, or walk through walls. You know, it's like, why do you have such a, what is all those bruises? These days, I should be able to do this. Let me try again. Yeah. yeah. And also it, it, like parents still, parents don't go, uh, you know, in a family, it's not a democracy. You know, yeah. it's like, it's a dictatorship and for a good reason, because those kids right. don't have right. a clue, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. And as we're older, we just move from judgment to discernment. We don't, we, it, so judgment, as you said, you mentioned this, you say, use this word, but judge, judgment, this level is coming from the ego and ego by definition pits us against ourselves and each other, puts us up in this to, against an artificial standard, holds us to that survival mechanism. So you're a hundred percent right. And I have to and say, also, like the story ahead. of Job, like the story of Job, you know, Job thought he knew God. And it's like, were you there when I laid the foundation of the earth? When I put air into the nostrils of the horse and did this and thunder and light, Job's like, holy crap, I have no clue what's going on here. And he got his humility back and he, and he reclaimed the awe and the wonder and the innocence. And he's like, God, you do you. It's like where most of us are like, thank you, God, for getting me here. I'll take it from here. You know, yeah. we think we actually know what's going on. And the truth right. is, just like we think we know what happened in our life. We think this was bad and this person did us wrong and they should have never fired us. But if you actually look back and see the thing where it was bad and evil, in many cases led to some of the things you think are the best and the most beautiful. And some mm -hmm. of the things you think was so good led to some things that were pretty bad. And so we of ourselves have to accept the humility that we don't really know what's going on. 
And we, we cannot, we have greater and greater expanded awareness, but most of our awareness is very myopic. It's very short term. It's very good and bad, very childish. And we just don't know. And so to judge is to basically lock yourself into limitation and you don't need to judge. You don't need to judge right and wrong in order to continue to embody the qualities of life. You can keep embodying more love, more peace, more joy, more beauty, more abundance, more generosity. You can never, ever go wrong by embodying more God or more good. Even more justice. More, even more, more justice. justice. Like if it comes from a clear place, like a parent exactly. hits his kid out of fear, that's a bad That's That is an unaligned parent, let's say. If he, if he, some, if he needs, I'm not advocating hitting a child, but you know, if the child keeps running into the street in front of a car and nothing changes that, you know, that's discernment. That's, that's, that is a clear place from a clear place. We can, we can know, we can really know. And and we're doing, and we have, and we do our best. You know, if we see somebody being hurt, we want to prevent people from suffering and people from hurting. And that's absolutely legitimate. And if somebody's doing something that is damaging or destructive to themselves or others, they probably need to be put behind bars. But that, even if we close the door of the cell, the key is do not close the door of your heart. Yes, 100%. Do not judge them as bad. Forgive them for they know not what they do. We're all being run by, by code. There's a lot of universal code, a lot of it that is old maps, old patterns. They're not true, never were, or they're not anymore. And we're caught by that. And if your computer is running an old program and it's causing all kinds of problems, yeah. you don't get mad at your computer. You get mad at the program. Oh, maybe. Gandhi, well, sometimes you do, right? <laughs> no, if you know it, what you're doing. Yeah. But that's ignorance, right? That's Gandhi yes, said, right. <laughs> you know, love the sinner, hate the sin. It's like, so we have to understand that, you know, we're captured by these beliefs, by these old yeah. maps. It's not But it's fault. also, like, you're also saying, yeah, it, it's true. It's not, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just. No. Uh, but it, it, it's it's also what you're saying that when we understand that there is a divine order, when we understand that there is something emerging, when we understand that it's all as I the lines that I read at the beginning and the rest of what you have written there, it, everything is part of this vast plan that as humans we can't possibly understand yet we will because as we open the flow we will be opening to all of it. So I, I couple things. I mean, we're already it's going so well. Fast. I, I want to I just say a couple of things real quick about that because yeah. the divine we can know the divine plan now. The divine plan is to love and be loved and to glorify God or to bear witness or glorify. It's the same thing we see everywhere in nature. Every seed exists to manifest the glory within it, to right manifest now. the pattern that is in it now. That apple seed's mission and purpose is to be all that it is. And so our mission and our purpose and the divine plan of life is for life to flourish and flower fully in every seed of creation. Agreed. That's it. What is there is full. no bigger plan. It's not like okay. the big plan is to eventually encamp, you know, put the world in a bubble or create structures like Atlantis so we can fly. Those are all beautiful things, but the plan is life wants to manifest more of life. Yes. God wants all, to be known fully. Well, that's, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It, there, this happens as we reach one level of evolutionary fulfillment, which is really what you're speaking to now. You're speaking to the level of evolutionary fulfillment that we're aiming for now that is necessary for what's emerging. But once we're there, it's not over. I think no, you even no. said this. It's, in, it's infinite, and so Just it's going to continue. Like we don't know, we don't see the entire. How could we? We're not. We don't have the vessels for that. We don't have the capacity. So th that's what I'm talking about. It's it's not an evolution. I think you even said this that it's, we're not pinning it on the wall. We're not going to get there, and then we're there. No, we're going to get right. there, and then it's like, how wondrous? How much more wondrous can it be? How much not more? Right. Can't you know that from here we can't see it from the next, and, yes. it's, and it's quantum. So it's not. You know, we're changing. It's a Change. It's a series of changes, you know, exactly. to use language that I know so far. Totally. Um, and they're quantum. Glory to greater, it's glory to greater glory, world yeah. without end. Yeah, exactly. Yes, <laughs> well said. Yeah, so uh, what I want to know, um, and, you know, there's limited time, so I do want you to talk about not just the program, but what is life, life code, and feel free to talk about the program that, again, Derek has, Derek has made 
an incredible, it's really, it's, it's an astounding offer. Um, so I want you to talk about that. If, if it helps and we can do it in the short time that we really have, um, I'd like you, I'd like to hear a little bit, maybe, maybe we don't have time for it, but how you shifted based on the experience. You told me this even before we started, I mentioned it again on, on, on in the session that, that the loss of your son caused you to realign in very profound ways. But, uh, but before you do that, I just have to say from my end, when, when I talked to you, I think I mentioned this at the beginning, when I talked to you in 2014, and I think we talked twice because I was really taken aback by how much of what you said is mirroring my worldview and the view of authentic Kabbalah. And I mean, even the fact that you keep talking about, you talk about chaos and order. <laughs> A great Kabbalistic master said in, in 1991 that in, to, bring it, to bring this era home, this stage of quantum evolution, we must start to embed or integrate the lights of chaos. This is a Kabbalistic level of infinite light in the vessels of Tikkun, which is a world of order and a superstructure where everything fits together like a divine puzzle. And that is done through connecting to, you know, the right and the left. It's really more complex than just the right and the left, but can everything to find holographic to see everything and everyone in yourself and yourself and everything and everyone so that everything has a way to connect. And then that, don't, that doesn't work unless we understand on some level or allow for on some level that there is a plan, which is exactly what you're saying. So we're all here for the same plan and purpose. And when we organize around that in all these practical and mystical and detailed ways, that's when things really start to work. So I'm just, I don't know how this happened to you. I don't know how it's happening to you. It's a kind of an, a unique experience to me to, to be speaking with someone who doesn't come from this tradition. To be saying the same, to be saying the same. Yeah, you use, you know, some of your analogies, I was gonna say you use different, and some of them are exactly the same. So I don't even, you know, I don't know what we're necessarily both connecting to, and I don't know if it's the, your son. I mean, this happened to me before when I talked to you, and I've gone through many, many things since then, and yeah. you've gone through many, many things, and now we're, it seems like we're, we're still really, connecting. At the yeah, same and level. on the new level, and I don't, I, I, I have to say I'm a little bit mystified. <laughs> Well, you're not, not that you're, I have not just, an you're, mis, you're it's you're not just mystified. It's because you are mystical. Okay, you are you are a mystic. Obviously, you're doing the inner work because the everything that I share or teach or talk about. Obviously, I've read books and I've studied. I've studied the great scriptures of the world. I've done a you know, but really, the greatest um, teacher in teaching has been practice. Yes. and li living it, meditating and praying every day. And sometimes, as I said, 20 times a day and for many years and taking these, the ideas that I read or experience into consciousness like seeds and nurturing them and being with them and thinking about them until they sprout, not just that line I read in a scripture, but that becomes a seed oh, that man. bears fruit. And then I, and then and now I have real fruit to give the world that is that sounds maybe a unique ways but it carries the truth now that was in that original teaching but it's, it's come i opened up a book a kabbalistic book that is the primary text that i teach in my classes because it's the gate that's my business named after it's called the gate of unity it's the mm -hmm. gate to divine consciousness i would show you exactly what you're describing <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I've never studied the Kabbalah. I know. Right? That's and, why I'm like, what? what yeah. What's happening? I mean, you know, I mean, I've maybe briefly seen a picture here and there, but I'm not a student of it per se. But of course I am, because ultimately yeah. truth is truth is truth. Yeah. And um, if you're really a student of truth, you will start to see, you know, again, as Jesus said, if I do not find one worthy, I will command the rocks to shout it out. God is saying that. God is like, I don't need a book to show you the book of life. Just look up at the tree or look up at the stars or look within. And if you're looking with a pure heart or a sincere desire to see, you'll see the truth. And so I see the truth everywhere in everything. And yeah. then I see it and then, I, and then I'm reaffirmed by seeing it across all the great scriptures and philosophies and artists and teachers throughout history. It's like, oh yeah, same truth, same truth, same truth. Oh, there it is in, Bot botany, there it is in quantum physics, there it is in, universe. Yep. In, in, in all of it, right? It's all the same truth. Just it's all the body of God. Everything's the body of God expressing itself. Exactly, exactly. Yep. And so 
or like a diamond with all these many facets, but it all reflects the shimmering light within the diamond. Yeah. And so, so that's how I come to it. And then, you know, I've had my share of challenges, but again, instead of merely being a victim of them, like my son, which I mean, if, you know, what can I say about that? It's like having your soul torn out through your heart piece by piece every day. And, um, I, I, I'm surprised I didn't die of dehydration from crying so much. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the sorrow and the depth and the depth of annihilation that, that has, that's, that's been my experience um, and the stages that I've gone through, it's unfathomable. And um, I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy if I had an enemy. And, but because, and, it, and it's still there, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like a God-sized hole that will never be filled except by more and more realization of God and or love or truth. But, and it's accelerated my journey. It's accelerated clarity and priority and, you know, what really matters and all of that. Um, but it's because of my practice and because of me understanding what I'm offering people today, how to have a greater understanding of their life and their life story so that they're, no, they're, they're increasingly not a victim of life, but they are coming from a greater place of agency. They are living, as I said earlier, more from insight than from eyesight and understanding that life has been conspiring to fulfill something in them greater than they can even imagine. Just like if you tell a caterpillar, see those things flying up there, that's you, man. The caterpillar is like, are you crazy? I'm afraid of heights. Yeah. Um, and so, so life is conspiring for us. And so because I've done this work for so many years, when these challenges have arisen, I've been able to meet them and meet them with a degree of wisdom and even hold myself in the grief and in the pain as Derek 1.0 crumbles and burns to ash. And I can hold the space through that process as Derek 2.0 emerges with a pure heart and pure intention and, and a clearer you know, um, purpose. Um, but all of that started and continues to be my commitment to know myself, to be true to myself, or to put it in a slightly higher target to know God and to be true to God. But it doesn't matter if that's not, if that doesn't work for people, just know yourself and be true to yourself and live what's within you to give. And you will create the resilience, you will become the kind of individual, and you will take advantage and realize everything you've been living has been, like I said earlier, a workshop you've been living. And it's ultimately the workshop you're meant to be giving, whether it's as a teacher, coach, healer, artist, or even just parent. When you understand it, you not only heal your life story so that you don't carry with you the baggage and the burden and the carcasses of all that has died and all that has been hard, but it all gets transmuted and transformed into new energy and new inspiration. All the detritus of everything that has gone before creates the fertile soil for what's trying to grow. Yeah. So you heal that, you stop repeating the past. And as you said in the very beginning, you start to be now here. Actually, you said here now, but if you say now here, it's nowhere. <laughs> it's not in time or space. All right. And you create the fertile soil for for something truly new, something that's true, something that's really who you are. And what I've created here and worked with thousands of people around the world, um, I wanna first offer, and I guess there'll be a page you'll send them to or something. It's There's a link a free, the video. Yeah. Great, a free training on how to turn your life story into your life's work. And I'm a, you can start there if you want, but for those of you that really want and that's, to- That's the free, that you're giving that away as a gift, yes? I'm giving it away as, as a gift. And, awesome. and that's really, really valuable. And if that's as much as you can do and as far as you can go, go for it and, and just dive in and begin the journey of reclaiming all the power that you've left in the seeming past and realize all the gifts, harvest all the blessings that your life has already done. It's out in the field and you need to gather them now, right? And the years the locust have eaten can be restored unto you. And you can begin to live your life as if life has always been on your side, always been conspiring for your freedom and fulfillment. I'm yeah. telling you what I know. 
Now, that's the first piece. The second piece is the life code. And that's for those of you that are feeling that urgency of emergence and you don't want it to become an emergency or, or another emergency. And you really want to realize what has my life really been about? Who am I really? What am I really made of and made for? What am I really here for? And how can I begin to codify all of that? Understand the code of my life and begin to understand how to put it together now in a way that speaks, that messages, that allows me to create, and whether it's in my relationships or my business, or I wanna launch a new business or create a book or whatever it is, how can I really take all of the benefit of my life and begin to offer that into the world? And here's what I want you to know. All what we see out there trying to teach you how to live your purpose and all that, so much of it is like, people are telling you how to make a really beautiful gift box, but there's no presence inside. Or they're showing you how to make really pretty shiny cars and they're coming off the conveyor belt with no engine. And that's why there's a lot of crickets and a lot of this stuff doesn't work and it's just a lot of noise. When you know the engine of your life, when you are really holding the presence that you are, then no matter what gift box it's in, no matter whether the car is not the shiniest car on the block, it's going to get you to where you want to go. And you're going to be an individual that is a light in the world that will make a difference in the people in your life. And who you are will shine in a certain way that it will attract to you like a homing beacon, the people and the tribe that share that life code and that are meant to be with you. What, again, whatever that is, whether it's your partner, you know, your loved one, or a tribe of your own to teach, share, or grow with as a community, whatever it might be the case. They won't be able to see you until you know what that light is and you know how to turn it on. And so that's gonna really help you a lot for that. I've helped people heal their life in many ways as a result of this program and also launch their work in the world, you know, and make a living doing what they love, all those wonderful byproducts of that. Here's the thing, that program also comes with literally half of my library of programs. The sole purpose- <laughs> just, would just so happen, Would just so happen to address the key pieces of, of, of pretty much that are involved in transformation and how to live in. <laughs> in all areas yeah yeah yes and that program is you're going to get the sole purpose blueprint the best year blueprint the confidence code the, um you're going to get so you're going to get so many things in this package this package and this is true and you can go to my website and check it out when i said in the beginning i've never done this and i'm not doing it anywhere else i don't know why i decided to do it Shifra. maybe just you for whatever reason i haven't seen you for so long yeah. but um we're this is normally a two thousand dollar package and again, you can go to the site, people buy it from the site, and, um, but I'm giving it pretty much less than cost. I think it's like 297, is that right? 297. Yeah. 297 $2. doesn't even, 297 <laughs> isn't even the cost of the life code alone that I've ever sold it anywhere near. And you're getting like four or five other programs that all sell throughout the year for you know, 500 or 900 or 300 or different prices for the different programs. And I'm just giving it all to you. And I'll tell you the honest reason is I've gone through this transformation. As I said, I downsized my business a lot. And um, my ambitions are very different now. My ambition is to serve the full flowering and flourishing of the divine in every individual. And, and I believe this will help you do that. And if I could give it away for free and still keep the lights on, I would do that. I'm, I give away most of my stuff for free. But you know, we have to be able to pay for the Zoom channel. <laughs> we have to do all that stuff. Food, <laughs> food. You know, just Target, those kind of things. car, gas. Well, that's a big one. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But but check this out. And oh, one other thing, I'm actually I just decided to add, as if there oh, wasn't well. enough, is um, a month free in the Awakened Wealth Mastery monthly. Get out. So they'll be in that too, and then you'll, you'll that way you'll get private coaching with me as well. You'll get actually me to be able to personally look you in the face, hold you, support you, answer your questions, and help you to put all these pieces together and hopefully really help you to have, within the next 30 days or so, have a real shift and a real breakthrough in your life 
and so that you can position yourself for what's unfolding right now. There's still a lot of tumult to come. We're Thanks. not out of the woods of the Armageddon that <laughs> we're experiencing. So, and, the the more, <laughs> and the apocalypse. And the apocalypse. But the more you're anchored in you, the more you have an understanding and an inner standing, you will be able to have a powerful outer stance. You will become outstanding. You'll become anchored and rooted like a tree. And even if there's storms and droughts, your roots will be feeding and drinking of a much deeper place. And it won't burn you down or blow you down or dry you up. So that's the key. I want to get you positioned so that you are being fed and nourished and you are on purpose and on point. So as things are changing around you, it doesn't stop you from thriving and from ultimately flourishing so right on and so essential and not only that but as e as each one of us as even one of us makes that shift it's like we're moving to a different track of reality and it will attract it will literally manifest into the world so these things the tu the tumult you know there's there's chaos in birth there's a lot of chaos in birth but it can be terrifying painful chaos or i can tell you i've had births like that or it can be aligned and magnificently transcendent where the pain does not even feel like pain it feels like pressure and i mean i had at least one birth at 21 hours that was sounds like i've had 20 births i've had a few but yeah. i was i was telling jokes with i was in the elevator with a doula who was overweight and people thought she was in labor because i was telling jokes during the during the yeah. contractions and transition and that's really you know we when we change from that when we change from one track to another we change the way that the whole entire things unfold things the thing unfolds and things unfold and that's real and i just want to say uh well, quick technical note um please tell your um whoever is on your team or let people know how it, when they purchase the package will you will they automatically get an email or whatever that includes yeah. access to the to the okay to the mastermind derek yeah. has worked with people in the awakened wealth which is not one of the programs listed here and he's actually created massive literal money shifts with people many yeah. many times and um, based on these tens of millions of dollars and businesses and debt array i mean lots and lots and lots of yeah transformation. yeah and it comes the the basic principles what we talked about earlier which is the law of circulation and the understanding that life has to keep moving and circulating and and when we stagnate for a variety of reasons, which we've talked about some of them, life's not flowing and then the tree doesn't grow and it doesn't bear new fruit. And we can be stagnated emotionally or physically or financially. And so when you unlock this abundance principle, which I also talk about obviously in the Abundance Project in depth, the book you mentioned, yeah. um, your life just starts to blossom and flower again. And, uh, and that's real abundance. Real abundance is not getting more fruit. Again, as I said, the tree, it's not like the sign of abundance is not somebody comes along and hangs a bunch of fruit on your branches, right? That's not how, that's not how nature works. The sign of abundance is that you are able to emerge and flower and fruit and produce and circulate your love, your life, your creativity, your joy, your genius, your energy. You're able to abundantly circulate that. And when you are able to abundantly circulate that, not getting blocked, not stopping short, not protecting, but just letting life flow through you and out into the world and blessing the world and being like the sun and the rain that falls and shines on the saint and sinner alike, when you're able to just flow, then the, the byproduct of that is more manifests more abundance, insight, inspiration, guidance, direction, money, people, growth, evolution. It's all about flow and circulation as we, we've been talking about. So I'll get more into that on the Awaken Wealth calls. Um, but, but we first, not just first, but simultaneously, we want to get you anchored in what you're really made of and made for so that, you know, there's some stability there and start to re- claim and transmute and transform the stories of your life so that you're not recapitulating those old maps of reality and staying stuck in these loops that are not allowing you to grow that are allowing and you to stagnate the world is our mirror at this point what's happening you know upset about the war between russia and ukraine upset about the vaccines the non-vaccines the virus the not the you know whatever you're upset about 
It's an absolute stock market crashing. <laughs> that too, the yeah. Supreme Court throwing back, you know, potentially trying to bring us back. 40 years in terms of legislation and laws. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. And whatever it is we're upset about, we have to understand, and it's, it's, it's not so simple to understand, but we have to train ourselves uh, to understand that this is, the world is out projecting us as a collective. So every time we hold a judgment that puts us in opposition to actually what's unfolding, instead of realizing that it's all here to, sh to show us a mirror to what's been going on so that we can move to the next level you know, from the tree of knowledge. So what's going on? into what's going on in us. Yes, yeah. That's the key. Yeah. I'll say one, I wanna say one more thing about this is, what we also wanna do is there's, there's a circle of influence and a circle of concern. So when we think life is happening to us and there's all this stuff going on and crazy people and crazy things and dangers and all this stuff, <clears throat> a lot of our attention goes on our circle of concern, which is, means it's a circle of concern, of worry, of doubt, of fear, of projection. It's not a circle of influence, meaning we have no opinions. influence. Yeah. It's just opinions. We have no influence there. But when we, and what happens is our circle of influence shrinks and stagnates. But when we focus on where our actual influence is, our circle of influence, even if it's small right now, and that means knowing myself, honoring myself, being true to myself, doing the work we're talking about to grow myself, what, and we stop focusing on our circle of concern. We take back that energy and that attention, which the world is spending trillions of dollars to steal from you, your attention. We take it back and we put it on ourself, on the truth, on words and videos and conversations that are leading us back to ourselves, not leading us out there. Then the result is that circle of influence will grow. You will have a bigger impact. And as you have a bigger influence, life is going to put you in places to have more influence. It's going to draw people to you that need yes. your influence. The and more then trustworthy you are, the more trusted you are. Exactly. So, so the, and then the circle of concern will shrink and your circle of influence will keep expanding. So this is all about putting our attention back on our circle. As it says, be ye not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not worrying about the world and what it's doing, but becoming curious and committed to knowing who we are and what we're up to, and then living that fully. And that's our greatest focus of influence, is being the best and the biggest and the brightest and the truest version of ourselves. That's how we'll make the difference in the world if we're here to make a difference. And we are. Yes, and we're very close. It does. It's, we're very close to the end of this phase, and and just a few moves, a few expansions. Who right. knows? You know, one of yeah. them is going to be the critical mass, and then everything changes for the good. Anyway, okay, I, I <laughs> unbelievable. Number one, number two. I'm telling I everybody. Guess we had here, a few things to catch up on, Shifa. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna. I, we're my from my perspective. We're gonna have to do it again soon. Um, for sure. We'll be in touch, but I want to. I just want to encourage everybody here, in an even stronger way than I than I sometimes do. Just if you haven't clicked the link, maybe I hope you haven't because we're talking here. But if you haven't clicked the link to Derek's, so Derek is offering a free gift. Just letting you know you can that that link is here, and underneath that is the, uh, or I don't remember which order they are in, but the the special offer. Just even if you come to an event like this. The life code package. If you, many times people come to events like this, and there's there's so many. I would say there are none like this exactly, but but there's so many events. There's so much information flying around, and I know many times people come saying, "I'm not buying anything, but I'll take advantage of what I want to," and that's fine. That's great. It's here for you. But do yourself a favor and just read the page. Yeah. Read the page. Reading the page will change you, and just take a look at what's there. So wherever you're coming from, I want to make that strong recommendation. And Derek. Thank you and so there's no, much. There's also, there's also no risk, I think it says on the page. Yeah, it very, does. It does. It does. Yeah. You know, but you don't even do think about that right now. Just yeah, that's not, page, start to finish. Yeah. Your, it, your vibration will change. You may see an opportunity. You may just have experienced an opportunity. Whatever it is for you, I'm recommending that as your next action. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you'll see what you'll see what's what. what you, what's what for you. Okay. Anyway, Derek, um, I know I kept you a long time, but that's okay. Actually, I'd like to talk pleasure. a lot longer. 
Yeah, this is, this is my joy and my jam to talk about life and love and truth and God yeah. and support people in realizing it themselves. Yeah, yeah. What else do I have to do, Shifra? But, yeah, <laughs> good question. What what, walk in the grass, walk on the beach. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I will yeah. do that for sure. I will yeah. be doing that. It's nice. Out. Okay, awesome. It's just been awesome. And we'll talk so, soon. So good. Thank you, Thank everybody. You so much, my dear. Much love, everybody.